Słuchasz Radia Pryzmat, Staromiejskiego Centrum Kultury Młodzieży w Krakowie. Uwaga, uwaga! Zaczynamy program poza rządem. Good evening. My name is Martina and you're listening to Prismat Radio. I'm here again to talk about volunteering. You already heard about volunteering from a perspective of foreign volunteers who are staying here in Krakow for nine months. And now you will hear some more. For the ones who are listening to us for the first time, I will introduce EVS. So when I say that I'm an EVS volunteer, it means that I got here with the help of EVS, the European Voluntary Service. EVS is European Union program that promotes the mobility of young people through international activities with a non-formal education dimension, such as youth exchanges, voluntary services, youth initiatives, and training of youth workers. EVS offers young people the opportunity to volunteer up to 12 months in another country. Me and all other volunteers that you heard here are a part of EVS project here in Krakow with our association STREAM, Youth Development and Integration Association. We are a big team of 29 people and we are volunteering in different organizations. But we always have time for traveling, having fun and forgetting to know Poland, its people and culture. So far, if you were listening to our radio show every month, you could get to know volunteers and learn about their life here. But today I have a very special surprise for you because I have some very special guests. This was Strong by Ek. We are back in Radio Prisma studio and I'm very happy that I can introduce my guests. I have not one, not two, but three guests here today. Hello everyone and welcome. Hello. You know Fran already, he was here last month and he shared his experiences. It's good to have you back. The girls are here for the first time. Agi is volunteering in Ushmihlosu and Mireya is working in a kindergarten. Mireya, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Yes, I'm Mireya, I'm from Barcelona and I'm working here in a kindergarten with kids from three years old, so the smallest on the place, and it's really nice to be here. And tell me, how did you decide to apply for EBS? I was bored, let's say, about my previous life, like I was studying and at the same time working, so I was super stressed and I thought, okay, this is not the life that I want to live, so let's make a big change. And that's why I'm here and I applied for the EVS. Similar story uh, as mine. Uh, but after you applied and after you got accepted, was it a hard decision to really leave home? Actually not, because I had been thinking about it like for a long time, so it was not a surprise even for my family or for myself, because I wanted to live abroad some time in my life, so it was like, okay, for them and for me, of course. I'm, I'm happy for you. Uh, so what do you do here in Krakow? You said that you work in kindergarten with the small children, but can you tell us, for example, what do you do in a day? Yes, uh, they are not doing so many things because, as I said, they are the smallest in the place, so they are basically eating and playing and sleeping. But every time I can, I'm playing with them or trying to show them some activities, uh, how it looks my country, some words in my language and that kind of things, just to be with them and to feel them like close. And every time I can, in their timetable, I'm doing these kind of things. And do you like it? Do you think it's fun? Yes, it is. Um, so from all the things that you're doing, what would you say that it's your favorite part of the job? I don't know, but I love when I arrive in the morning because they are already there. I start at nine, but they can go to the kindergarten before. So when I arrive, it's just open the door and they are all shouting Mireya, Mireya. So this is the best moment of the day because I can see that they really love me and they need me and they want to play with me. So I feel like super loved there and it's the best moment of the day, Must be <laughs> even a... if it's nine in the morning. <laughs> Must be a great, great feeling to, to yes. because similar experiences have been shared from other volunteers too. Venla said something very similar. So I really believe um, you when you say that. Uh, how about Krakow? Do you like the city? I love the city. I didn't expect like a city like that because I didn't know so many things about Krakow before. It's not like a famous place, at least from Barcelona. It's not like a super famous city to visit or to go. And I really love it. I'm mm. super happy to be here. I love the place, it's really beautiful and I love living here, like the daily life. It's easy to, to make with them, so it's okay. 
Even in the winter when it's really really cold, people are outside on the street and the the city still looks so beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And the winter it wasn't as bad as I thought so. It yes. was okay. <laughs> yes, I I agree. <laughs> Even though it was long. Yeah. Uh and what about Polish food? Do you like it? To be honest, I have to say that I don't like Polish food. So <laughs> No, it's not the best food in the world. No, it's I a it's say. a big change from from your country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I like it, but uh, I'm originally a lot closer to Poland than than you. Uh, do you miss home while you are here? I know that my mom won't be happy with that answer, but no, <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't miss my home. Not really. Yeah, mm. me neither. I don't think many people who are in our project But because miss... Because I feel like home here too. Yes, so exactly. It's a, like it's a different kind of family or a different kind of daily life, but still it's like home for yeah, me. Yeah, it feels so like really familiar yes. and really cozy. I, I agree completely. Yes. Um, but what was the biggest challenge for you here? Was it the winter, the, the food, the language? Well, the food, uh, yes, a little bit, but I think the language because at the beginning I was super motivated like going to the Polish lessons and I thought that I will be able to speak like not super good Polish but at least the basic conversation but now I think that I give up with <laughs> Polish it's super difficult so I think that this is the worst of of being here like because I'm not able to understand when people is talking on the street or in the shops or everywhere so this sometimes it's a little bit annoying when you don't understand what's going on around you yeah it can be tricky yes but i think that uh, even people who don't speak a word of polish can get by in this city because most of the people are used to having tourists or foreigners and they speak either a little bit of english or some yeah, other yeah, language yeah. i'm not saying that it's impossible to live here with polish because it's not I, it's easy actually yeah. But I don't like this feeling because I'm of. living here and I feel that I should know something about Polish, but it's super hard for me. Yeah, I, I understand. It was super hard for me at the beginning when you go to the store and you can't understand what you want to yes. buy. Yes. First thing, like really simple things. But like you said, it's it's possible. It's yes, possible. Of course. You get used to things, you learn some things and it, it can be really, really okay. So guys, I invited you all here uh, today because Not just because you are volunteers and you are great people, but also because you play music. Mireya, you are singing, Fran is playing cajon, and Agi is playing guitar. How did the three of you get together for playing? Uh, it was when we were celebrating Volunteers Day on December. And the organization and you, Martina, asked us to play something. So we decided to meet and to try to play something and see if it's something good for people and if we are, I don't know, sounding well. And at least it seems that it wasn't bad, so we did it. And that's why we are here and we keep going with that music. Yes, I'm, I'm really, really happy that uh, I just, like for me it was just an idea because I know that people uh, really like to hear live music. And I thought if we could do it for this Volunteers Day, for International Volunteers Day, it would be amazing. I know everyone would love it. Um, and I'm so happy that you took this proposition and worked uh, on it and, and made it happen because it was it was great. I, I remember it and I'm really excited to hear you playing here. I know that you prepared something for today, like I said. So can you tell me which songs will you play for us? Yeah, the first one that we would like to play, it could be uh, Lava, a remix with I'm Yours, and then Beautiful Soul. Thank you, Mireya. So let's hear you. Watching all the 
crack And I'm trying to get back Before the cool don't run out I'll be giving in my best chance And nothing's gonna stop before the vine intervention I reckon it's again my turn To win some more Learn some But I won't hesitate No more, no more It cannot win I don't want another pretty face I don't want just anyone a hope. I don't want my love to go to waste I want you and your beautiful soul I know that you are something special to you I'll be always faithful I want to be what you always needed Then I hope you see the heart in me I don't want another pretty face I don't want just anyone I hope I don't want my love to go to waste I want you and your beautiful soul You're the one I want to chase You're the one I want to hold I won't let another minute go to waste I want you and your beautiful so I don't want another pretty face I don't want just anyone I hope I don't want my love to go to waste I want you and your beautiful soul And thank you, that was wonderful, great, great music I always, always enjoy listening to you live But tell me, what kind of music do you usually listen to? And does that influence your, your singing uh, and playing style? Yes, of course. I mean, this music that we are playing is the one that I'm used to listen because it's easy for me to sing something that I know by heart, let's say. But sometimes we have kind of travels because we are, I mean, Fran and me, we are from Spain. So if we don't listen to the same music, we know Spanish music and yeah. we know this international English music. But sometimes with Aggie, it's a little bit tricky because she doesn't know Spanish songs and sometimes it's difficult to choose which one because maybe it's the first time that she's hearing that song or yeah. listening to that song so but we work hard for for doing it well and I think it works <laughs> it, it worked you you sounded great um, and where did you learn to sing let's say that um, I've never been to singing lessons mm -hmm. I was just dancing for a long time and at some point my dance teacher Uh, said me that maybe I could sing and that was the first time that I tried to sing in front of the people like in a show like dancing and singing at the same time and then she realized that I was not bad so we decided to create like uh, our own musical mm -hmm. and we recorded some songs with my boys and another girl's voice and that was the first time that I wasn't going to lessons but my dance teacher was teaching me some something techniques to, and yes to do it better and yes I didn't I know I didn't expect to be singing here to be honest but I'm happy because I really love it and I think that I would like to take lessons maybe but as I said I was like in a super stressed life and I didn't have time to do these kind of things Yeah, Now so, that I have it, I, I have yeah. to take advantage of it. Maybe maybe this experience will motivate you to yes, pursue this, yes. this dream of, of singing. Did you manage to use this love for music that you have uh, here in Krakow, maybe in work? Do you motivate kids maybe to dance, to sing? Yes, actually yesterday we celebrated the Eurovision yes, contest. Yes, I know. With all the kindergartens. And I'm super happy because I won with my kid. So yes, yes we were singing together, like for a long time, a Catalan song. So it was nice to, to have it in the show. And yes, every time I can, I'm just playing music, like mostly Catalan music, because it's what I say that I'm trying to show my culture and my language and that kind of things. 
And yes, I think that music and dance with the kids is a good way to get in touch with them, uh, even if we have this barrier of the language. So it's okay to use music. Yeah, well, they say that art is an international language and yes. music is definitely art, so yes, 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 you can cross some barriers with it. And the event yesterday, I really have to say, I was there just to, to take pictures, uh, but it was so cute and, and so great and so amazing. And all the kids were just adorable. And congratulations Thank for you. your <laughs> winning uh, for this Eurovision. Even if you don't win uh, the, like even if Spain doesn't win the big Eurovision, <laughs> at least you have... I have to say that I don't like Eurovision, so <laughs> I, I don't mind what Spain is going to do. So, <laughs> But you, you won uh, on, on, on this one. Well, thank you for, for the advice, uh, and I think that we can now hear some more of your music. Okay. What will you play now? Yes, we have two more songs. The first one, Shut Up and Dance, and the second one, a Catalan song which I really love. Uh, it's called Boch Partu. Let's hear it. Oh, don't you dare look back. Just keep your eyes on me. I said you're holding back. She said, shut up and dance with me. This woman is my destiny. She said, ooh, ooh, shut up and dance with me. We were victims of the night. The chemical, physical, kryptonite. Helpless to the best and the fatty. And thank you, that was wonderful again. Like I said, it's always great to hear you play. I really, really adore uh, live music. I love to hear it, I love to see it. Uh, so this whole performance is a small gift for me and I, and I really, really like it. Um, we are slowly getting to the end, uh, but let me ask you this first. Uh, would you recommend people to go volunteering? Definitely, yes. Definitely, yes. Yes. Um, do you think that people can uh, only do it in their own countries or uh, to go abroad? Because some people maybe think that it's tricky, that it's hard to go abroad to, to volunteer. But from my experience, I really don't think it's that hard. But even if you think it's hard, I think that you have to cross this comfort zone and to go out of it. 
to get the, be the best experience of your life because maybe it's waiting there for you but if you don't go if you don't make the step you won't get it so yeah, you, you never even know. if you are afraid uh, just keep going and try to do new things and yeah definitely yes yes I, I agree completely with you and even if you are listening to us now and maybe you think that um, you are too young or that you are too old or that you are really that you really cannot go to volunteer abroad I assure you that is not true but on the other hand uh, you can always find some uh, activities in your city in your country to help with to volunteer and to get some experience that will then maybe help you to get some courage to go out um, I did volunteering in my country I really loved it and that's how I decided to go to volunteer abroad and this experience for me really changed the, the perspective when it comes to job, when it comes to education and, and life in general. Uh, because I think that before I just thought, okay, we get education mostly in school. But I think that you can really get it outside of it. Yes, yes, I think the same. I mean, when I came here, I was just focused on the project, like working on the kindergarten. But now I realize that I have learned so many things outside the project, like outside the job, let's say, outside the kindergarten. Yeah. And I have learned a lot of things about life, uh, about relationships and also about me. And I think that being here, it's making me like grow up uh, so fast and like in a proper way. So, yeah, it's an intense experience in any case. Um, OK, so uh, you, you prepare things, you, you already played in some events, uh, you love to play. But I think that there is one song that we really need to hear. And that song is something that stayed with us from the beginning of your project, uh, that stay uh, with us, especially when we go out, when everybody goes out. Yes, when everyone is calling me like this. <laughs> when everyone calls you like this, so I think we really need to hear it. It's a song that everyone loves and everyone hates. So let's hear Despacito. Si, sabes que ya llevo un rato mirándote Tengo que bailar contigo hoy Vi que tu mirada ya estaba llamándome Muéstrame el camino que yo voy Despacito Quiero respirar tu cuello despacito Deja que te diga cosas al oído Para que te acuerdes si no estás conmigo Despacito Quiero ver bailar tu pelo despacito Firmo en las paredes de tu laberinto Y hacer de tu cuerpo todo un manuscrito Quiero ver bailar tu pelo Quiero ser tu ritmo Que le enseñes a mi boca Tus lugares favoritos Déjame sobrepasar tus zonas de peligro Hasta provocar tus gritos Y que olvides tu apellido Despacito And that was Despacito. Uh, thank you for this little improvisation. It was great. I just knew that we needed to hear it. Um, and maybe I really, Polish people is going to hate us after maybe, that, <laughs> maybe. or to love us after But that. I, I think that your uh, version was much better than the original, so <laughs> maybe they will not hate us. Um, thank you all for coming. It was a real pleasure having you here, uh, listening to your music. I hope that you will continue to play and share good vibes. Uh, right now we are at the end of the broadcast and just before we finish don't forget that you can always follow our organization stream on Facebook at stream association and also on Instagram stream dash association you can also get a lot of information on our webpage stream.org.pl thank you everyone for being here thank you Mireya thank you Agi thank you Fran uh, thank you for giving us all the information uh, sharing your experiences Thank you, Agnieszka, for all the technical support and thank you all for listening to us. We'll be back next month.